All right, everybody, before we start talking about changing out a entire core of code, I want to talk a little bit about uh, bits and flags and how they work. And when I'm talking about bits and flags, you can find uh, flag bits in a lot of different spots. For instance, screen info. These are either on or they're off or, you know, there's some in if you look at, say, you know, your player inside of his object details, these are bits, you know, these are flag bits. Um, and so we want to talk a little bit about what they are, how they work, and how they are infinitely uh, uh, variable as far as what they can do. Uh, so we'll just take a look at a couple. We're not going to really create our own in this tutorial, I don't think, but let's just see where this goes. So first of all, uh, I brought in all the adventure game stuff, and I made this real quick little test screen here. Um, and I'm going to play it just so we can see that, you know, this is an adventure game. It functions like I would think it would. I press the arrow key, or I, you know, I press the D-pad, and my character moves around the screen uh, just, you know, just like it's in. There we go. And I'm, I stop against the, the blocks here. Looks logical, like a Zelda, like a Willow, like, you know, these sort of games. Um, okay. But I want to change this now. I can go into screen info for this particular screen. And I can say that I want this screen to use gravity. And now what I've done is just by clicking that bit, I have now changed this into a platformer. Now, I, I, I'm i using still the same inputs from the adventure game. So I'm not going to be able to jump because I haven't told it to be able to jump yet. But what you're going to see is now I will fall uh, to that block. And if I walk off that block, I'll I'll fall off that block like in a platform game. And there's some other weird things that are happening with the, with the movement and stuff like that, but you you get the idea of how quick that how easy that was to do by just changing by just flipping a bit. Um, these are representing bits inside of bytes and we'll look at one in a second and I I tend to usually think of these things as flags, you know, I'm flagging this bit which means turning it on, checking it, making it one instead of zero. So real quick, let's just test that again. And I should be able to hop down, 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 down. Um, now, the way that the collision detection works in the adventure game is slightly different than the platform game. So I'm going to kind of get a little stuck into the floor, which makes my movement a little jerky when I'm moving like that. But you get the idea, um, performing as I would expect a platform game to. In fact, let me make another screen over here. Um, I'm going to turn off gravity. But I'm going to make it scroll to the right, and I'm going to make a screen over here. And, you know, I'll put an arrow over here so I can see. And I'm going to make this screen also scroll to the right. And now, just by flipping that bit, I, it wasn't scrolling before, but now when I get to a certain part on the screen, you'll see I scroll to the right. Um, and you learned in the last tutorial about Sprite Zero, how we can affect Sprite Zero. Um, if I wanted to, I could go to Screen Info and I could set up Auto Scroll. And since I have Screen Scrolls Right and Auto Scroll turned on, <clears throat> now it'll just automatically start scrolling right. And, whoops, sorry, it only works if I've done that on both screens, obviously. So, Auto Scroll. And now I'll auto scroll to the right. And if I get stuck, I die. That created my death object, which is this object here, which I haven't set up yet in this in this module. So um, that's how I can flip these sort of bits on the screen to make different things happen. And I want to take it to at least look, uh, even if we don't create something, I want to at least look at an example of what's happening. So gravity, using gravity has to do with uh, the physics, right? So if I look at my physics script, if I go to script settings and I go to physics and I edit this, I'm going to search real quick for screen flags. And there was a hit inside this script for screen flags. And I can see that it's doing something if a certain screen flag is checked. So basically what this says is load the screen flags. These are all bits inside of one byte. There are eight bits. If we take a look at the screen info, I have eight bits in one 
byte, right? So if I look at these side by side, I can see I've got zero, one, two, three, four. In fact, it's act, I should I should do this correctly. It's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is use gravity. So what this is saying is, check the screen flags byte. If that fifth bit here is a 1, this says basically if it's not 1. If, it e if it's equal to 0, then there's no gravity here. So if I get to this point, it means there was gravity. I'm going to jump to gravity physics. And that's this part, which handles the gravity which is a which is a macro which determines you know what happens if this is actually flipped so that's actually what's happening when when you know i can make conditionals based on what is checked here now what's really great about the way that these bits are set up is they're completely definable by you uh, i'm going to give you an example and this is going to be a really stupid example but i'm going to give you an idea at least how to use these bits let's take uh, bit number zero one two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? It's a single screen game one, which is this right here. Z uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So single screen game would be here. I don't wanna call this single screen game anymore. My, my game is never gonna use single screen game, let's pretend, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my labels and where it says screen flags, I'm gonna change the name of single screen game to force reset and this is going to be really dumb um i'm gonna hit close and now if i look at my screen info you'll see that that label now says force reset now right now it'll still do the single screen game stuff if i check it because i haven't said what it, it should do anything different but for kicks i'm going to go to um the same code in the physics engine this is a really stupid place to do this but okay right at the top of my physics engine i'm gonna load screen flags and i'll look at that seventh bit there okay this is don't forget we start here with zero this is the seventh bit if it equals zero i'm going to jump to this plus sign right here all right however so this means if it equals zero go to plus so this means if it doesn't equals zero if it is checked in the GUI. So if it's actually checked, I'm just gonna jump, reset, and this will skip everything else because it'll actually restart the game. So if I have this checked, as soon as the physics script hits, it'll jump into a constant reset state. And in fact, the game will look like it's just glitching out. I'm gonna save that script. I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna hit okay over here. Now, right now it's gonna function completely as normal because that bit is not flipped on either of these screens. So acting completely normal. And in fact, it's like a uh, Zelda style game where I get to the edge, takes me to the next screen, just like I'd expect it to happen. Okay, but now if I go to screen info and I click force reset, which is the new name for this label that I've created, and hit okay. When that screen loads, it's gonna reset. And there we go, reset. So as soon as I loaded that screen, and in fact, if I do this, oops, if I am on the first screen, and now I want the first screen to force a reset. Now it's just gonna get stuck. It's just gonna keep resetting itself like that because I told it when that bit is flipped to do a thing, all right? So as we start going through modules, don't think that this is all that the game can do. Don't think that when you see these things inside object details that this is all the types of objects you can have or these are all the um, action step flags that your character has um, you can define what these things mean if your game doesn't have gravity at all you're probably not going to use ignore gravity and you'd use this bit to do something else um, and and so we now know how to rename it and we know how to you know 
read it in code to determine whether or not it's checked. So just wanted to show you guys a little bit about uh, bits and flags and how they're working with the tool and how you can affect their labels in the GUI and how they work in the assembly language underneath. For those of you getting deeper and deeper into assembly language, um, that's going to start to make a lot more sense uh, and, and you'll probably be able to do all kinds of cool stuff with that. Um, we're going to take a look at how we can load completely different cores, script cores next. Um, and that's going to, I think, open up a lot of possibilities for you guys.